Hello everyone, this will be a short basics tutorial on how to run Generate Me script in processing software to create a cool FM glitch art that looks something like this. First things first, to run the script you need to download version 2 of the processing software. I will link everything down below for your convenience so you can have all the links in one place. As you can see here, the processing software comes for Windows, Linux and Mac operating systems. So you need to choose appropriately, a file that will work on your computer. And in my case, it was Windows 64, so I right clicked and clicked save link as to save the file onto my desktop. When the file was downloaded onto your PC, unzip the following and just check that the .exe file inside the folder is working correctly. Next we go on to generate me github page and download the code that was generously created and shared for free of charge to be used by everyone by its creator Tomas. His email can be found on the bottom of the github page and if you have any questions and you email him about it, he's really dead sound and helpful guy so he'll definitely reply back and help you guys out. Also, you can see down below the disclaimer that most of these codes will only work in processing software version 2, but we have that covered already by downloading the right application at the beginning of this tutorial. When you unzip this file, you will find inside subfolders for every code. What's great about them is that each subfolder has a test image inside them and another subfolder that shows you what each code effect looks like on that specific test image. So you have a better idea of what exactly you're going to be playing around with and what kind of effect you can achieve on your image. In this video we will touch on FM code, which is one of my favorites for its distinct style. You'll see exactly why once we start experimenting with it. So let's start playing around with the code. Even if you never used coding before, this code is very straightforward and easy to understand. And Tomas has written an explanation for how to use the code, which can be found on top of the code and what each part of the code does, uh, which part should be left alone and which could be tweaked. This particular code can be used on RGB or grayscale color space, which basically means if you want to change it to color or black and white, there's a specific option for it in the code. The wave frequency and bandwidth of the code is adjusted by the user mouse, so it's fairly straightforward when you get a hang of it. All you really have to do is just left click and then you move your mouse left, right, up or down and just see how the effect changes. So let's press play and see how this code works by default. All I'm doing right now is just moving the mouse left and right, up and down and as you can see it's just basically tweaking the design to look a bit different from what we started off with. Okay, let's X out of this image and try this effect on our very own image instead. First copy your image into the folder where original test.jpg file is located. I personally renamed my sample image to test1, so it's faster to amend the name on the image file in the code, but you can just amend the code to your default image name, it doesn't really make a difference. So let's press play and see what happens. Not bad. But I think I personally prefer it to be a black and white. So let's go back into the code and change it from RGB color to grayscale. So go into the notes on top of the code. I can see that to do this, we need to change RGB text to GS in here. Press play again and let's see. Yep, my image is now black and white. And now we move the mouse till we get the effect that we prefer. When processing, I like to keep the code to the right hand side of the window and the image to the left so I can keep tabs in the small black window on the bottom of the code. It will show you if you're in an editing mode or if you maybe clicked the mouse by accident and came out of the editing mode itself. If this happens to you, all you have to do is just left click the mouse again and you're back to editing. So when you move the mouse up, down, left and right, you'll see that it's actually changing again. Also, pressing letter N on your keyboard will invert the colors of the image, which sometimes may come in handy and create an interesting effect. It works both in RGB and grayscale, 
so if you're working in colors it's just going to invert the colors but if you're working in grayscale white turns to black and black turns to white just to give you a bit of an idea how it works once you're happy with the result to save your created image all you really have to do is just press spacebar and it creates a new subfolder in the folder of the effects that you've been using with the saved image in it and there you have it your very own fm process glitch art I really hope you guys found this tutorial helpful and I want to say a very big thanks to Tomas, the creative behind the Generate Me code, for being so sound, for providing the code for free to everyone and also for letting me use his code in this tutorial. If you guys would like to show some appreciation for what he does or to help out a little bit, his cousin's son has a disability and there's a Polish foundation that looks after this little boy. I talked to Tomas, he sent me over all the links that I'm going to provide down below for this foundation and you know a little will go a long way especially now while all the foundations are underfunded thanks to COVID. So if you can donate even like a few bob that will actually make a really big difference for this little boy and I think it's a really great foundation that looks after little kids who actually need the most care right now but you know unfortunately the medical expenses are so expensive and not every family could afford it. So without further ado, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.